there's rarely been as great a sense of excitement on uh, on Crick Buzz in conversation as the opportunity to talk to the person today. Uh, first of all, let's look at some numbers that are astonishing. Just one of three players who've made 10,000 runs and 500, 500 wickets across formats, but even more astoundingly, who's scored 15% of his team's runs and 22.5% of all the wickets his team has taken and all the internationals that he has played. We're talking to a modern giant. We're talking to Shakib Balasan. Shakib, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. good. Now, where is Bangladesh? Where is Dhaka and Chittagong? And where is the United States where you are? Yeah, it's been hot here in Wisconsin, Madison, the city I'm staying at this moment. Uh, obviously, the situation is not ideal. And I just had a uh, daughter who is now, I think, 40 days old. And during these 40 days and plus one month before, uh, I'm staying here in, in Madison. So it's been tough. But it's been okay as well, you know, with the kids, one is four and a half, one is month and a half. So they're keeping me busy, uh, obviously missing Bangladesh a lot. Uh, it's it's the first time I think I'm away from home for this long. So it's it's been tough, but at the, on the other hand, uh, you know, I'm, I'm staying with my family most of the time. I mean, all the time for the last three months. So that that's that's a good good sign. Tell us a little bit about being a star in Bangladesh. And the reason I'm asking is I know what it is. I've seen mm -hmm. Tendulkars and the Kohli's and the Rohit's and the Dravids, Kumbles. I've seen what kind of following they have in India. But I've also seen Shaurav and Kolkata because the following in Bengal is, is slightly different. It's it's very emotional. It's yeah, very I think passionate. it's completely different yeah. than, than other cities or countries. So, how is it being a star in Bangladesh? Does it come with a lot of baggage? Does it come with a lot of responsibility? Does it come with a lot of pressure? I think it uh, comes with a lot of responsibility more than anything else and a lot of expectation as well. Uh, but, you know, it keeps me motivated. You know, but I always think because I'm a huge fan of uh, Lionel Messi. So, you know, when I watch him play, every time he doesn't perform, I feel like, why didn't he perform today? You know, something like that. You know, he should have done better today. Uh, he could have done better for his team today. So, uh, I, I can feel the same way for the people in Bangladesh expecting me to perform you know, all the time. And that keeps me motivated all the time. So, that's a good sign in a positive way that, you know, uh, I keep, you know, they keep me motivated all the time. Do you, Tami, Mushfiq sometimes sit together and think about what a great journey it's been together? I mean, three of Bangladesh's best ever players all coming together in that same generation. You sometimes sit back and think, yeah, it's been a good ride. I think I think the best time will be when we retire three together and then yeah. sit back and relax and talk about it, what we have done. I think we're playing from under 15 together. Mm. And since then, we're till now, we're together and hopefully a few more years. And then we can sit back and talk about, uh, about what we have done for Bangladesh cricket. But for now, I think we can look forward and think about 2023 World Cup, which will be very important, you know, for Bangladesh cricket and for us. So, uh, time for us to look forward now, at least for now. And after a few years, we can look back and think what we have done. Do you realize you've just sent a huge ripple across all Bangladesh fans just by saying, when three of us retire? Can you imagine <laughs> people are going right, saying, what is this? How can we imagine life without the three of them? Because, I mean, Mash Mashraf is almost at the end, maybe at the end. So, the three is the three of you. So, is, is there a little rivalry also between you all? Mushfiq scores runs, so I need to score runs. Tamim is looking to score that, That's many. a healthy rivalry and that's that's good for, for the team, I think. You know, so you need to have those rivalry, uh, you know, for the betterment of the team. So, someone is scoring a 100, you need to uh, score 120. You know, so that, that's the rivalry we have and we are very close with, I think, with all the formats, runs and, uh, you know, if you talk about T20, ODI and Test, I think we are very close, not, not, so difference won't be more than 1000 runs, so everyone, I think, eyeing on to go, go, go top of, top of, uh, you know, each other, so that's a good rivalry, I think, and you should have that type of rivalry with all the teams, you know, to have a healthy competition. The other reason I asked you that was success came very quickly for you. 
Some people it takes a long time. You struggle your way through. Was it 2006? You're playing the Under-19 World Cup, right? And you're still young man. You're not yet 19. You're still playing the Under-19 World Cup. Mm-hmm. But 2009, you're already started to get ranked up uh, in, in uh, among the top all-rounders of the world. 2007 World Cup has happened. And was it all a blur for you, saying, "Oops, hang on, pause"? It was. It too was. Quickly. Y- you know what? Before 2002, I didn't even knew that uh, you know b- there are under 13s, under 15s, under 17 teams who goes plays uh, against CAB, uh, goes to India for a tour. I never knew that they plays Asia Cup as well. There is under 19 World Cup. So. When I got myself admitted in uh, BKSP, it's a sports institute where I studied. So when I got admitted there, and then I only realized, okay, there is under 15 where I can go and play if I perform well. Since then, I started working hard, and it was I think early uh, late 2002, and then in early 2003, I think I played the uh, under 15. Went to Kolkata for the CAB tour. That's my first tour with mm. the Bangladesh team. Uh, and then from 2003, 2006, I played the Under 19 World Cup, and later on to that year, I played uh, for the Bangladesh team. So it went like this. So the graph was like took off. <laughs> yeah, because uh, by by 2009, you're the number one ranked player. Mm. But I want to talk about 2007 first. That match against India. Now, all of a sudden, there's a group of young players coming together. Right? Tamim got a 50, Mushfiq got a 50, you got a 50. Uh, I think Mushfiq got four wickets in that game. Yes, got four. Is wickets. that still among the biggest moments in Bangladesh cricket? I mean, let let me tell you some. For example, beating Australia in 2005. Right? I think that was just before you you made the side. Uh, yeah. Ashraful got a hundred there in Australia, or was it 97 when you first qualified for a World Cup? Which are these? Which are the big moments in Bangladesh cricket? I think 97 will be obviously there because that's where the benchmark starts from. You know, Do you remember at all? How you, you were so very young. No, I, ne- I never watched that game in in TV. You know, I never uh, heard it even on the on the radio as well. So it was just uh, suddenly we we hearing Bangladesh won and they qualified for the World Cup and they won the ICC trophy and people are jumping around in the roads and I went with them had fun. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, playing with the colors and all, <laughs> so that that's what I remember, you know. But I don't remember that I was that mad. Of course, now in YouTube I can watch that mad, mm, uh, but I ne- I never watched that mad on TV or heard it on on a live, you know, radio station. It was just uh, from someone who said, "Oh, okay, Bangladesh won the ICC trophy." So that's that's the moment. Obviously, I saw the one in 1999 uh, World Cup against Pakistan. Yes, yes, that was a big one too. And yeah. 2007, I was the I was part of the team. So, uh, three biggest moment. Of course, I will share is the most the one I played against <laughs> India. Yeah. Uh, but you know, these are the three I think uh, most significant win we could ever think of. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting that uh, recently Tamim Iqbal was quoted as saying that. When Bangladesh played India in the 2007 World Cup, a lot of you were very young. Uh, even Mustafi, I think, had only played two, three years by then. A lot of you were very young, and they said right in front, there's Tendulkar, there's Dravid, and there was a sense of awe almost at playing against yeah. these big guys. Did that happen to you as well? Because you came in at a crucial moment and you scored a very mature half century. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to be honest, we are staying in a hotel, same hotel we are staying in. Mm-hmm. So uh, during lunch time or dinner time. We tend to, you know, uh, walking mm. pass through Sachin or uh, Dada because we speak Bengali. So Dada used to say a few words again uh, to us. So uh, and we saw Rahul Dravid, Sevag, you know, all, all the biggest star of the game that we grew grew up watching. And suddenly we playing against them. We'll be playing against them. It was like, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> and it, I think me, Mushfiq, and Tamim, we didn't had even a year of international cricket by then. So we had just played, I think, five to ten ODI matches before we played the World Cup. So it was like a dream that's that's going through on our mind. We were just enjoying the moments. Obviously, the perfect stage was because we are in West Indies. The beauty of West Indies, we all know. <laughs> so that that kept us, you know, little relaxed mood. So that helped. 
but you know we we are dreaming that we are just happy to play against them because if i talk about 1998 1999 when i was a young kid you know wearing half pants all the time <laughs> uh, going going <coughs> going to someone's house to watch a match uh, playing india versus pakistan india versus sri lanka pakistan versus sri lanka these are the big rivalries and we used to watch all those games so it was like a dream that we are living in that moment do you sometimes get worked up when people say bangladesh upset somebody you think that stage is long gone <laughs> no now now to be honest uh, most of them uh, doesn't believe in those you know it's upstate world so a lot of people now says okay bangladesh is a formidable uh, team now they have been doing well for last 2 3 years or 4 5 years and now it's it's not 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 a surprising side for a peop- for for someone to see bangladesh winning against any other team especially in odi mm. does it also bother you that the big three haven't played against bangladesh that much i mean india came to bangladesh a few times but bangladesh only toured india in 2017 and then 2019 uh with england australia it's pretty much the same we only been to australia once only been to england 2005 2010 do you do you want to be the voice that says hang on we are bangladesh too you know we want to we want to travel more because that will aid the development of your young players better yes i think i think that that's a very important uh, point you you raised i think it is very important uh, for team like bangladesh and afghanistan and zimbabwe those are the teams uh, that came along they have a history of cricket and they want to do well they they love their game uh, to help them by playing consistently against those countries will always help us you know get better get challenging and we will know what it takes to beat regularly big sides so i think that's a important point you mentioned and i think uh, you know uh, that's the those are the side you know authorized can uh, look into just looking at world cups because you tend to look at big moments you know Yeah, 2007 was obviously big for you you're a young man 2011 15 yes a bit here bit there but then came 2019 was that the best you've ever played yes just what one changed, answer is what changed in 2019 uh obviously you batted three but you also bowled yeah. well it wasn't just that you were bad the, the mentality um you know from december I was thinking that uh, so uh, from 2018 December I was thinking the three world cup I played I don't think I performed to my potential and as long as I'm not performing to that level you know yes they say yeah I, I played for Bangladesh I did well for Bangladesh but you know to go to that level I need to show somewhere that I'm capable of you know competing with all the other great players they have played or playing at this moment so then I realized that what can be the stage that I perform and then people can think of obviously the world cup then I said okay look I need to do something but I didn't start my preparation until I went to IPL so I went to IPL I played I think the first game and then got drop and then i realized there are hardly any chance that coming to me this season because all the four overseas players were performing brilliantly and i realized that you know i don't have much of a space to play after first three games uh, i decided okay i need to prepare for the world cup what i was thinking in december i need to do it now if i do it now i have time but if i don't do it now it will be too late so since then i changed completely i did everything right that need to be done to perform in the world cup of course there are plans there are trainings skill trainings i talk to most of the you know computer analysis with all the teams because i know most of the them uh, most of them because i play across all all franchise tournaments so i know most of them i talk to them which are the bowlers i'll be facing what is their mentality what's they saying what are the areas they can ball or if you are my opponent what are the areas you will be telling your bowler to ball to me you know these are the things i i 
took all the preparation even before the world cup we went to ireland for a month and i never think of that we playing against west indies and ireland the four or five matches we played the only thing was in my mind that first game i'm playing against south africa and then after that and after that and after that so this was my only thinking so i think i prepared so well so well and i never think in that way before in my career ever even my parents went went to went to england uh to see me that never happened in my career because we are having a long tour so we we, we stayed at 67 days so more than 2 months so i knew that i'll be fatigue i'll be homesick something like that my family was always there with me my wife my kids was always there with me but uh, having your parents uh, there with you at the end of the you know tournament Uh, from the middle part uh, to, to the mm. end of the tournament was extra boost for me you know uh, this is the first time they went somewhere they never came to a gr- ground in bangladesh as well so that's the first time they went so that was all planned and i did all those planning during i was in ipl doing my training doing my planning all of that i did it in ipl during ipl Is is it true? I mean, I read this story that you actually invited your childhood coach to come over to Hyderabad. Sorry? Is it true you invited your coach from Bangladesh also to come oh, over yes, to yes, Hyderabad yes. at that time? So, so uh, big thanks should go to Tom Modi. So I asked him, look, I I understand the situation and I understand that there will be, you know, less chance this year for me than last year. So can I bring my coach from Bangladesh to do some extra training? obviously i i'm i i'm doing training with the team and the extra training i need or with the coaching staff who uh, you know hyderabad had they have a fantastic coaching staff with vvs lakshman you know morally uh, and tom you know the 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 all are fantastic guys with them i said look this is the extra i think i need to do so i'll be prepared better so when i when i get my chance so i need to make sure that i perform well for ipl and also i want to prepare for myself for the world cup so tom was very kind and he said okay of course you know just bring him in and if you need anything from our side just let us know so big thanks should go to tom modi and then i bring my coach uh, and uh, he was there with yes and he was he, he was there with me i think uh, 14 15 days so around 2 weeks with him i did all the skill training but before that i already did my fitness so i was well fit at that time when i started my skill training and we did all the specific training we needed to do with talking with against uh, with the uh, computer analysis from hyderabad and all the other computer analysis that i know it's interesting players at your level and i've seen that with sachin tendulkar and ramakant atrekar his childhood coach as well players at your level still sometimes go back to the original coach even though you're now playing at a much higher level i find that very yeah, interesting I mean, that, that, that just the comfort level you know yeah. because they are watching you for from you know from your childhood so since you are under 15 or under 14 since then they have been watching us so they know our game better than us that's what i feel and it's not that uh, you need to change a lot of things maybe just one or two words one or two sentences can change your whole complexion of you know cricketing uh, knowledge or batting ideas or bowling what you are thinking so mostly i worked with my thinking there are some fine tuning that i needed to do i didn't change much to be honest i was just feeling more comfortable by training of those 14 days so i train in the morning train in the afternoon and then with the team so i had like three session during a day between those hectic ipl uh, you know schedule that we normally have so it was good and you know after i think first one week i started feeling very confident and then after two weeks it was almost over and i was supposed to come back to bangladesh uh, and world cup was almost starting for us because we were going to ireland a month before the world cup so so i i felt very confident and i felt i'm ready before i you know took the flight uh, for for ireland yeah. was it your decision to bat at 
it was completely my decision to bat because you numbers. you're not batted at 3 a lot no i i happened but uh, the few times i batted at 3 i felt comfortable i always feel that i need more time at the wicket then i can contribute more you know what uh, because i was batting at number 4 and 5 during 2000 7 to 2013 14 what used to happen we tend to lose one wicket two wicket quickly then another wicket during 15 to 20 over and i had 30 overs to play with now we have been batting so well i i i tend to go into batting at now in in 30th 30th over or 35th over so i don't have much time so then i realize i need to bat early to contribute more with the bat so that that's the reason i batted early and i had a chat with to be honest av de villiers during he was playing bpl in bangladesh and i was uh, talking to him and i said what do you think batting at number 4 5 finishing the game or batting at number 3 scoring 100 for your team and win the game so and we had a very good conversation and you know that that's one point i thought okay i'll take this challenge because it was challenging for me because uh it's hardly i uh, faced you know new balls and batted at number 3 but this is the time i thought okay this is the challenge i can take because i've been playing all my career batting at number 4 5 6 8 i have done that so this is a new challenge i i should take for my team and yeah. for my myself so that's when i decided okay i'll bat number 3 is that the highest point being player of the tournament in the uh, world cup well i wished for it <laughs> to be honest <laughs> um yeah i think as as a individual player that's the highest achievement i think you can get i got um, man of the series once in 2012 asia cup that was i think a huge achievement for me because all the big names of the other subcontinent team team was there so players like mahela sangakara sachin sevag all all those players were playing at that time you know misba yunus khan all those players were playing So getting man of the series award at that stage was a special moment for me. Uh but yeah it would have been nice if I would have get the man of the series in a world yeah. cup. Uh, yeah. But that that happens I think I think can deserve it. Uh, the way he handled uh, his team and took them to the final was was something you know I'll cherish. Okay. Now we've sent you a list of nine all-rounders. Right? The, the, okay. Some of the best names have played the game. Now there's a super over out of these nine players you've got to pick two to bat and one to bowl who have you picked who was my nine uh, Let, i'll pick yeah. so in super over you pick three batsmen right so if one gets out there is another guy can bat so i can pick three batsmen and one bowler to bowl my over Yeah, but you've got to tell me which two are going out to bat first. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll tell you. Okay, so just we'll bring up that picture. We got Stokes, Pandya, Nisham, Russell, Narayan, Nabi, Pollar, Jadeja, Bravo. Who are your so, two going out to bat? Narayan will bowl my over, bowl my super over for sure. I'll go with Russell and Hardik Pandya, and number three will be Ben Stokes. Stoke, ben Stokes. So yeah. it's an interesting one. You have. Dwayne Bravo and you have Sunil Narayan and you've gone with yeah. Sunil Narayan. Yes. What yeah, was it about? It's just, it's just because I I played uh, with both of them, uh, but it's just Sunil Narayan. If you think of his best, he was unplayable. I think he bowled a maiden over, took three wickets in a CPL match in a super over. So, <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you you can't think of anyone else other than Sunil Narayan to bowl your over. You can argue with your batting order because I can pick maybe Pollard or someone else. Yeah. Um, but I pick uh, Hardik Pandya just because the way he can hit from ball one and Russell, both of them, and Ben Stokes because I like him the way he plays his game, the character he got. So that that's why I pick those four players for my super over. There's plenty more coming up on part two of Crick Buzz in conversation with Shakib Al Hasan. <laughs>